friends, welcome to second lecture on Economics Chapter 3, Money and Credit. In this video, we shall discuss all about credit. Let's start by understanding the definition of credit. So, credit refers to agreement in which the lender supplies the borrower with money, goods or services in return for the promise of future payment. So, credit is nothing but loan. And loan refers to an agreement between the lender and the borrower. And the borrower has to return the lender's money after uh, some time in the future. And on this, the lender charges some interest. Now, is taking loan or credit good or bad? Let's understand this with the help of two stories. So, the story one is about a shoe manufacturer. It is festive season and a shoe manufacturer, Salim, has received a large order from a large trader in the city of 3000 pairs of shoes. But he doesn't have so much money to buy the raw material. And he has to take a loan from the bank to meet his expenses. At the end of the month, he is able to deliver the order to the trader and make a huge profit, which takes his manufacturing to the next level. In this situation, the credit plays a very positive role. But let's see another story. The second story is about a small farmer. A small farmer takes a loan from the money lender to meet his expenses of cultivation. But before the harvest, the uh, crop is attacked by pests and the crop fails. Thus, the farmer is not able to repay the money lender's loan and falls in debt. And he has to sell a part of his land to pay off his debt. In this situation, the credit plays a negative role and leads to the loss of farm. So thus, credit can take a positive as well as negative role depending upon the situation. Now, does the bank give loan to any person or does it put some conditions on the loan? So there are few terms of credit. There are four terms of credit. Interest rate, collateral, uh, documentation requirement and mode of payment which the borrower has to fulfill before the lender gives him the loan. So first, interest rate. Every loan agreement specifies an interest rate which the borrower must pay to the lender along with the repay repayment of principal. So apart from the principal amount which has, the borrower has taken from the lender, he has to give some amount extra as interest. Second, collateral. So collateral is an asset that the borrower owns and uses this as a guarantee to the lender again uh, until the loan is repaid. If the borrower doesn't repay the loan, then the lender can sell the collateral. And collateral can be anything such as land, vehicle and livestock. So basically collateral is a security and if the borrower does not pay the uh, loan on time, repay the loan on time, then the lender will sell the collateral and uh, take his money back. Third, documentation requirement. So the borrower has to submit certain documents like identity proof, residence proof, etc. Fourth, mode of payment. The borrower can repay the loan in installments or as one-time payment. So all these things like interest rate, collateral, documentation requirement and mode of payment together are called terms of credit. Now the important question comes that if you need a loan then where would you get it from? So there are two sectors of credit, the formal sector and the informal sector. The formal sector of credit includes banks and cooperatives. Why? The informal sector of credit includes money lenders, traders, employers, relatives and friends. So in the formal sector, we take a loan from th uh, banks and cooperatives. While in the informal sector, we take a loan from money lenders, traders, employers, relatives, friends, etc. Now, let's differentiate between the formal sector and the informal sector of credit. So the Reserve Bank of India supervises the functioning of formal sector of credit. For example, periodically, banks have to submit information to the RBI 
on how much they are lending at and what interest rate etc while in the informal sector there is no organization supervising the credit activities of the lenders and informal lenders charge a much higher interest rate on loans than the formal sector and the higher cost of borrowing means large part of the earnings of borrowers is used to repay the loan sometimes people are unable to repay and fall in debt trap thus formal sector needs to lend more cheap and affordable credit is crucial for the country development so here we get a very important statement that cheap and affordable credit is crucial for the country's development now the problem is that poor households are still dependent on informal sources of credit so if formal sector like banks and cooperatives provide cheaper loans then why don't they go to the formal sector why are the poor people still dependent on the informal sector now this has many reasons first the banks are not present everywhere in rural areas so many rural areas don't have banks second the banks require proper documentation and collateral but poor people don't have the collateral and third many informal lenders know that the borrower personally and give loan without collateral so lack of collateral and documentation is another reason that why people poor people prefer informal lenders rather than the formal sector but these informal lenders exploit the poor people and charge very high interest rate the solution to this problem is organizing rural poor into self help groups now a typical self help group consists of 15 to 20 members mostly women who meet and save money regularly each member saves between 25 to 100 rupees the main motive is to pool or collect the savings of the poor people the sgs provide loans to the members at lesser interest rate so the people save their money collectively and if they need loan then the, that is a gi only provides them with the loan at a lower interest rate than the money lenders after few years if the group is regular in savings it becomes eligible for availing a loan from the bank without collateral the loan is sanctioned in the name of the group and is meant to create self employment opportunities most of the important decisions regard, regarding the saving and loan activities are taken by the group members also it is the group members which is responsible for repayment of the loan so hsg uh, ssgs solve the main problem that poor people don't have collateral and it helps the poor people to get uh, loans without collateral let's see few other advantages of the self help groups so the people are able to get timely loans at reasonable rates with the help of self help groups third it helps the women become financially self reliant fourth regular meetings of group provide a platform to discuss and act on a variety of social issues like health nutrition domestic violence etc the gramin bank of bangladesh is a brilliant example in meeting the credit needs of poor people at reasonable rates so one of the examples of self help groups is the gramin bank of bangladesh with this we come to the end of this chapter thanks for watching if you have any doubt then ask in the comment box and if you find a purpose behind this videos then do subscribe